Um, but I think we can start going through now with just some quick introductions. Uh, so Brody and I were just chatting about it a minute ago, but usually what we do is we go through um, and everyone can just quickly say their name and their company or where they work. And then if there's anything that you're really hoping to get out of today, it's fun to add that in too before we get started. So I will start. Uh, my name is Rachel. I am the marketing and events coordinator for the Startup Zone. And we've been doing these marketing webinars every Wednesday. So it's really great to hear different insights from different people. But I'm really excited for Brody's today. I think it's such a good idea to be working on the business while we can't work in the business. So I think it'll be really helpful for folks. Um, and then I'll just kind of go through the list here and then we'll just do quick introductions like that. Um, and then obviously we'll get to Brody at the end and he can take it away. So the next person I have on here is Carrie. If you want to quickly introduce yourself, Carrie. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Sorry. Yep. Okay. Um, it's Carrie Jones, Balance Consulting. I do um, largely ergonomics. Awesome. Um, Bernie Wood. Hi, it's Bernie here. Um, I do two things. I do consulting is, um, is one of the things I do, and I'm also a professional photographer. So I own Bernie Wood and Associates and also Real Media. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Clark? Hi, uh, my name is Clark, and I work in experience design, and I'm one of the product specialists at uh, Startup Zone. Awesome. Aaron? Hi, um, I'm Erin Robar. I'm the operations manager at the Startup Soul. Uh, so I help with the programming and uh, the programming being the resident company program we have. So if anyone's interested in learning more about the Startup Zone, uh, you can reach out directly to me and get involved in our community. If the email is erin, E-R-I-N, at startupzone.ca. Reach out anytime. I'm not going anywhere. Thank you, Erin. Um, John? Hi, I'm John McIntosh from Sport EI. Awesome. Thanks for coming out. Uh, Brenda? Maybe we'll come back around. Um, Pam? Hello. I'm, <laughs> I'm here. Sorry. Pam from Cat in the Box Studio. Awesome. Thanks for coming out, Pam. Um, Ricky? Hi, uh, I'm Ricky and I'm a private tutor. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thanks for coming. I'm um, just kind of going through the list here. We've got uh, Alex just came in. Do you want to do a quick introduction, Alex? Maybe we'll come back around. Um, Bianca? No? Oh, I see Alex now. If we want to come back around, Alex, if you want to introduce yourself. There's a really nice awkwardness to these. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm not sure if everyone can hear us, but I think we got through a lot of the introductions. Um, if anyone did get a chance to introduce themselves and kind of wants to jump in now. Oops. Yep. Uh, All right. Awesome. Also, if uh, anybody if anybody wants to say anything, like if they want to introduce themselves and they don't want to say it over the mic, you can say it in chat. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, so yeah, the introductions are always really awkward because we never really know where everyone is and if, if everyone wants to introduce themselves. But thanks everyone for coming out. We have about 15 people here right now and we're expecting a few more. Um, but I think we'll let Brody take it away here now. I'm really excited for today's webinar. So yeah, go ahead, Brody. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Brody Trainer. I'm the uh, owner operator of Outer Island Media. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm also a in-house specialist at Startup Zone in both search engine optimization and advertising. Uh, so if you at any point in this seminar think, oh, geez, I need to talk to this guy about my business, you know, either send me an email or uh, 
to send Aaron Robar, uh, even Rachel, uh, an email in regards to that, and uh, we can get in touch. Um, really quickly before we jump into things, I just want to thank everybody for you know coming out here, and I also kind of want to encourage you guys to uh, show some appreciation towards the Startup Zone staff right now. Uh, they've been working really hard lately, uh, ever since kind of the whole uh, stay at home. Uh, notices started. They've been uh, working really diligently to get all of the information out to the resident companies and you know they've been they've been doing a great job. They've had their uh, heads down working so if you could just you know send them an email or something along those lines just outlining you know your appreciation for them. I think they'd really appreciate that right about now. Um, but yeah we'll uh, we'll jump into the reason we're here. SEO. Uh, so you're probably here with one of two mindsets. You might be here with the mindset of, I've never really done SEO. What is it? Uh, uh, or you might be here with the mindset of, uh, you know, I've been working on SEO. I've been working on the back end of my website for a long time now, uh, but I've kind of hit a wall. What can I do to further my SEO? Um, how can I improve what I'm already doing? Uh, so hopefully by the end of this, we'll all kind of come to uh, some conclusions that uh, will help us <laughs> uh, all understand kind of the cyclical nature of SEO and uh, what we can all do um, to kind of benefit our businesses. But first, before we really jump into things, uh, we have to have a little bit of a fundamental understanding of how search engines work. So this is gonna be a really super simplified, summarized version of why search engines work. Um, if you want some more information, just in general about this workshop, I'm gonna put a link in chat here. Uh, and it is a uh, contact form, you can fill it out and I'll get some extra information to you. Um, I'll kind of take notes along the workshop of what people want a little bit more information on and I'll also you know, just include more description on what I cover in the workshop. So if you want that kind of information, if you want a little bit more, uh, go ahead and fill that out. But anyways, how do search engines work? Um, so at a very basic sense, uh, search engines crawl through the internet. So that could be uh, Google crawling through websites. It could be Facebook crawling through business pages, personal pages. It could be YouTube crawling through videos, it, whatever. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of these social media platforms are actually uh, search engines themselves. But it's kind of something important to kind of know as well. Um, after they crawl through the internet, they categorize all of the information that they've uh, gone through. They rank websites, they rank content, whatever. Then they store that information. They basically put it into a giant virtual um, filing cabinet. Uh, then a user will make a search or a query, whatever you want to call it. The search engine then retrieves relevant information to that search. Um, and this sounds pretty simple. This sounds like something that might not be a huge length of time to do, but it's actually a process that takes generally around a month. Um, you obviously don't see it when you make a search result because like uh, Google will show um, 10 results of 2.9 billion in like 0 0.09 seconds or something like that. That's just how quickly they retrieve the information from their virtual filing cabinet. Um, the actual process of scrubbing through the internet and categorizing that content takes a long time. It's why you can generally hear a lot of people that you know uh, do SEO servicing say uh, that SEO is a process that takes a long time. And it is, it's something that generally takes about a month before you can see the fruits of your labor. And uh, it generally takes somewhere up to three months before you can really start to see positive or uh, in some cases negative change to your SEO. Um, so it's something you have to be a little bit patient with. Anybody with questions? Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in chat at any point. You don't have to wait for me to ask. Um, but I will kind of wait until there's like a little bit of an organic spot for me to kind of uh, jump in and answer the questions. All right. Uh, why is SEO important right now? Um, well, it's important for a couple of reasons, um, but why is it specifically important during COVID-19? Uh, why is it specifically important now that we have news that 
businesses are starting to open up in different phases on the island and uh, just why is it important in general. So something that's really important right now that maybe a few people don't really realize is um, consumer behavior as a whole is really changing. Um, now, depending on your industry, depending on how you serve um, consumers or if you're business to business, this can mean different things. Uh, in a really broad sense, uh, in an anecdotal way, uh, the grocery stores are a really simple way to kind of monitor uh, consumer behavior as a whole. Uh, right now, uh, <coughs> things have changed pretty rapidly with grocery stores. Uh, it used to be that the peak hours for grocery shopping were between 2.30 and 3.30, and then again at uh, 5 to 7. And they, this usually coincided with, you know, people getting off work, uh, people, you know, just getting out of the house, that kind of stuff. Um, but now you start to see a lot more people uh, heading to grocery stores around opening time for the grocery stores, so early morning and uh, noon time. So what that means is uh, either people are taking time away from work to go grocery shopping, uh, or people are just not working at all and going grocery shopping during the day. This can have a lot of different ramifications. There's obviously other variables and other factors that kind of go into it, but I mean, like, this is important stuff to kind of take note of. Uh, because the whole consumer business relationship is in a weird position right now. You know, a lot of businesses rely on uh, foot traffic for a lot of their sales, but that's not something that's happening right now. So mm. we have to find ways to adapt to new consumer behavior. Um, and secondly, digital transitioning, uh, the, the practice of taking your brick and mortar store and uh, making it something that people can participate with or interact with in a digital setting. Like if you're a restaurant, uh, maybe having online ordering, or if you're, uh, you know, if you're a boutique in Charlottetown, having some online store, something like that, right? That stuff's not gonna go anywhere because of consumer behavior. Consumer behavior is already adapted towards doing this digital shift. Um, and it's going to take basically another uh, monumental shift for it to go back to normal. So odds are it's not going to happen. Um, so what we're going to see is we're going to see a lot more people relying on digital methods of interacting with businesses. So businesses that, you know, were having a struggle during this preliminary um, kind of lockout, uh, we're gonna see them start to continue struggling. Uh, and businesses that were you know, really profiting, or not necessarily profiting, but thriving during this time uh, because of their strong digital presence or whatever, those businesses are gonna to continue to thrive just because consumer behavior is kind of shifted towards that. So we have to kind of work on ways to adapt the businesses that weren't doing so well into methods and uh, strategies that the businesses that we're doing well, we're using that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it's it's complicated, but you know it's it's step by step, and everybody can get there. Um, another thing, if you're open or if you're opening, uh, people should know. It it's basically the fundamental thing of your business. If people can purchase from you, or if people know that they can purchase from you, uh, it actively makes. Google advertising cheaper. This is something, you know, if you're a restaurant that's just launching online ordering or something like that, you might want to do some advertising. Uh, or if you're a business that's been established for years and you have a new product coming out, or maybe you're able to open again, you want to do some advertising. Uh, and the nice thing about SEO is it's not like it's a short term um, uh, solution for making advertising cheaper. It's a long term thing. It, it stays with you. And the reason it advertising cheaper is because um, one of the factors that Google takes into place uh, when it's serving your ads to people is what is your predicted or your forecasted uh, click-through rate on an average day? What's your, what's your regular traffic like? Uh, and if your traffic is high, cost is lower. It's, it's a little bit complicated, but that's the simplistic form. Um, and of course, boosts organic traffic. 
Um, I'm going to kind of slightly mention this during the rest of the, the um, presentation, but just know that boosting organic traffic is probably the main benefit of doing SEO um, because this is getting in front of people that are searching for the kind of content that you're putting out. These are people that are more likely to convert, so more likely to spend money on your product, your service, whatever. Uh, these are people that you really want. Okay, so how can SEO help? Uh, the way I see it, there's kind of two main types of businesses right now. Um, there's businesses that have to pivot from a purely face-to-face -face customer interaction to a digital one, and then there's businesses that already had an online presence. Uh, they, you know, gathered leads through online purposes. Uh, they uh, did e-commerce, whatever. Uh, so how can SEO help those two individual types of businesses? Well, for starters, for businesses that, uh, you know, are pivoting, uh, it's awareness of new operations. So are you still able to operate in some capacity? You know, are you, uh, <clears throat> are you offering anything uh, like, uh, for example, the, uh, some of the restaurants downtown have started offering where they'll uh, they put together a package of you know foods that you can cook at home uh, that kind of stuff um, you want people to be aware of that kind of service uh, search engine ranking position otherwise known as SERP uh, this is you know where do you lie on Google like if somebody searches for uh, restaurants in Charlottetown what point do you come up um, you might be on page two of Google and really not know the difference between the results. Um, but for uh, the first rank on Google, uh, the average cl click through rate for that link is around 38%. That might not sound like a huge number, but the incremental changes between the different ranks is huge. Uh, so first rank is about 38% click through rate. Uh, second rank is usually somewhere between 15 to 17% click-through rate. So already we're less than half of the first result. Uh, and then in third position, you're averaging around 7% click-through rate. So you can see like the difference between first rank and even like the third rank on the, the first page of Google, it's huge. So if you're on that second page, you're next to invisible, which is a scary thought, but it's it's something that you can easily work towards getting on that first page and easily work towards moving up the list. And of course, you want to start with a strong foundation. Um, <clears throat> you you don't want to create a bit uh, like a website for your business. You don't want to spend you know somewhere between fifteen hundred dollars to three thousand dollars for a website if it's not going to do anything for you, right? So having a strong foundation is a huge benefit. For, uh, I'll, uh, I'll quickly answer uh, Alex's question here in chat. Uh, if you're a new business launching next season, would you still predict a strong uh, digital consumer base? I would. Um, this is something that is going to be probably ongoing for who knows how long. Um, because like, Health experts are saying or are suggesting that we might face something very similar to what we just faced um, again in the fall and then possibly through to next spring. So we kind of have to plan for the worst uh, and hope for the best, obviously. Um, but I would still, I would have kind of a safety net for the eventuality of, you know, a strong digital consumer base. All right. Uh, online businesses. Um, thank you, Brody. No problem, Alex. No problem. Um, online businesses pre-COVID. Uh, you're looking at higher local ranking competition. So what does that mean? Each keyword. 
Okay, so we're going to get into some terminology here. Keywords are basically uh, one of the main tools that Google uses to categorize your website. We'll talk about it a little bit later on, and I'll kind of go into a little bit more depth on that. But um, when you're trying to rank for on Google, you're in competition with everybody else who's trying to rank for the same keywords. Uh, so if you're in the restaurant business, you're trying to rank against other people in the restaurant business or specifically in your type of restaurant. So let's say you, uh, you're an Indian restaurant, uh, you, you have Indian cuisine. So you're also trying to rank against all of the other Indian cuisine or Indian related content on, uh, on Google. Uh, now that everybody is starting to switch towards a digital presence, there's a lot more competition. Um, and if other people don't know how to do SEO properly, they might be miscategorized and in your field, and it could add a level of comp competition that shouldn't really be there. Um, another thing, it's cheaper advertising for established brands. We already kind of touched on that, so I won't really continue on it. And it's higher organic reach. Again, this is the people that are, you know, like actively searching for a product like yours, you're getting ahead of their search intent. These are people that are more likely to make conversions and more likely to make you money. Okay. Know your audience, uh, business con to consumer. We've already touched a little bit on some of this stuff, um, but uh, we'll kind of go through it and uh, take it apart a little bit here. Uh, most consumers, uh, most consumer browsing is done on mobile. What does that mean? Uh, what, what kind of effect would that have on a business or uh, on a website? Well, you need to make sure that your website looks good uh, on mobile. Um, <clears throat> and, it, and it really depends on the industry, but uh, it, it, turn, it tends to be like the vast majority of uh, consumer browsing is done through mobile. Um, but you really want to make sure if you have new online servicing or if you have e-commerce on your site, that it looks good and it flows well through a phone. Um, general language should be eighth grade level. Um, this is just kind of like uh, a little bit of marketing knowledge. Um, if you're trying to talk towards uh, a general audience of consumers, you generally go with an eighth grade level for speech. Um, because it's just easily understandable. It's something that, you know, isn't full of jargon and it's something that, uh, you know, can reach a broader audience. Uh, browse primarily in the evening. We're starting to see weird changes with consumer behavior. So depending on your industry, that might not necessarily be the case anymore. Um, you'll kind of have to keep an eye on that specifically for your industry. Uh, a lot of them use Instagram for most impulse online purchases. This is something that a lot of people don't really realize. Instagram is a huge uh, marketing tool for e-commerce. So if you're not connected some way to uh, Instagram with your website, I would recommend looking into it. Uh, unemployment rate is continuing to rise. So this is something that's gonna touch on, you know, more of the negative impacts of COVID. Um, people are just gonna have less money. It's gonna be a weird time for businesses. Um, so you have to figure out ways to, you know, add extra value to your product where you can. Um, obviously, it's kind of the hopes that you're giving a lot of value as it is, but um, maybe it means looking into partnering with other um, uh, complementary businesses. Like uh, Hopyard has been partnering with uh, businesses like Upstreet or um, Craft Beer Corner, where they're doing uh, two meals and uh, a crowler, so a can of beer for $20. That's a pretty good deal as far as like their products go. Um, so kind of look at those examples and see where maybe your business can fit into that kind of stuff and add extra value to your consumers because consumers are going to be a little bit more fiscally conservative right now. Um, and like we've already kind of talked about, behavior is drastically shifting. So just kind of take a look at the landscape and, uh, you know, try to adapt as best as you can. Uh, and it, it, it might be a good idea. Like it's, it's difficult because we're one of the first places, uh, in Canada to really start lifting restrictions. Um, 
Another place that we can kind of look to for uh, a little bit of a glimpse into the future is internationally. Uh, what's you know South Korea doing uh, as they start to lift restrictions? You can take a look at industries there. Obviously, it's not a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence, but you know you can take some examples. Other provinces are starting to lift restrictions as well, like New Brunswick. So we can start to look to there as a little bit of uh, information, but just kind of this is one of the things that we're going to have to kind of take as time goes on. Uh, and then know your audience business to business. Things have changed here as well. Uh, depending on your industry, consumer browsing can be done predominantly on desktop. Um, that's, uh, it, that seems to be, uh, you know, pretty common through most of the industries that I've served. Um, generally language should be professional and clear especially right now, you wanna make sure that uh, you're as transparent with other businesses that could deal with you as possible. Um, you know, make sure everybody knows that you're, you know, doing your best to practice uh, health and safety standards right now and uh, that you're working, uh, you know, with that in mind and with your customer's safety in mind as well. Uh, generally browse during the workday. Uh, if I'm a business looking for a marketing agency, I'm probably not gonna be browsing for it during the evening. Uh, I'll probably be doing it while I'm at work. Um, it's just kind of the way it is. Same thing goes for graphic design, uh, for a, a, a plethora of uh, business to business services. So just kind of keep that stuff in mind. Um, and consider what businesses are facing restrictions right now. Uh, so, We've kind of touched on a little bit that uh, the first wave of restrictions are going to be lifted as early as May 1st, which is the end of the week. Uh, what businesses are going to be in that uh, section? Like if it's, if it's somebody who's in your uh, potential client range, maybe reach out to them or maybe, uh, you know, do some research into, you know, what are they going to be facing coming up? And then obviously if your if your client isn't in that first wave, you know, how do you approach them? Either do you do it now? Do you do it later? Do a little bit of research and do a little bit of forethought before, you know, like reaching out to these people right now. Um, behavior is going to be leaning uh, even more fiscally conservative. That's just going to be, you know, the case for the next little while. Um, so obviously add more value where you can um, and kind of cut costs where you can for your uh, for your uh, uh, clients. And then depending on your service, uh, whatever you provide to people, uh, you could possibly look into grants for, uh, for your clientele. Uh, for myself, there's plenty of grants that, uh, you know, uh, do basically 100% coverage. Uh, there's a grant put out by um, uh, Innovation PEI right now that covers 100% of up to $2,500 for uh, professional consultation. It's basically a way to um, promote uh, professional development right now. So it's, it, it, there's a lot of really great grants that you can look into. And they can also be really good selling tools. If, you, uh, if you're having troubles uh, selling business to business right now, look into whatever kind of grants your, uh, your clients can, uh, can really benefit from and try to work that into your uh, pitches. <coughs> okay. So let's finally talk about some, uh, some ranking factors here. We already kind of touched on it a little bit, but keyword and content targeting. Okay, so keywords are basically, you know, um, very specific, uh, I hate to use the word, but buzzwords, you know, uh, marketing terminology that helps uh, convey your message. Um, if you're a restaurant, it might be Indian food. If, your, uh, you know, you're an e-commerce website. It could be <laughs> a digital storefront, you know, whatever, right? Uh, there's different things uh, for whatever, but you also want um, your content on your websites, whether that be blogs, videos, photos, articles, whatever you have, you want to reflect the uh, keyword or the, um, the categorization of that keyword in your content. So you don't want to, if you're a marketing agency, you don't want to be uh, doing a whole lot of information on plumbing. Like the reason you could get there is like, maybe you have a plumbing client, 
you do uh, an article on them and it's all plumbing related, right? You don't necessarily want to be doing that. You want to be able to relate that content back to your industry, to your keywords, to everything that you want to target. Then of course there's device friendliness. We already kind of talked about, you know, mobile browsing is huge. So we need to make sure that our uh, website or whatever we're doing fits nicely on mobile, but it also has to fit nicely on um, desktop. It also needs to fit nicely on tablets because people do browse on those mediums. And uh, Google takes into account how your website performs on those ways. Um, because at the end of the day, the only service that Google has is its user experience. Um, so if their users aren't doing well, people could start switching to different, um, different search engines. Obviously, it's a little bit unlikely in uh, North America because Google has such a strong stranglehold, but at the end of the day, their only commodity is their user experience. Um, <clears throat> traffic flow, ease, uh, this kind of uh, goes back to the, the last point. You wanna make sure that people can get through your website easily. Um, you know, you don't want them to get frustrated at any part in your website or they'll likely leave. Um, site speed, that's something that's, you know, really important. Google uh, takes that into account pretty heavily. Uh, and some things that can affect site speed are like how large the photos are on your website. Or uh, if you have videos, how is that integrated into your website? Is it hosted straight through your website? So the website has to load it itself. Is it hosted on YouTube, on whatever? Um, these are all kind of factors. And uh, you might say like with your, you know, fiber op connection, oh, my website loads in like milliseconds. But if, you know, especially here on BEI, if you're out in the country, you, you could have an internet connection that's in the uh, kilobyte range. So if you're somebody there trying to browse websites, it can be significantly longer. Um, so you just want to make sure that, you know, your, your website is accessible, basically. Website reputation, uh, so spam rating and bounce rate. Uh, you don't want people, um, you don't want Google associating your website with other poor websites. Uh, that can happen through a, a variety of different factors. So um, something that's also a factor of uh, search engine optimization, and it's a pretty higher level, factor is backlinks. So it's like uh, a website linking back to your uh, website. So if the website that links to your website is kind of sketchy, people don't really enjoy it, you know, the user experience is pretty poor, that can reflect poorly on your website if they link to you. Um, there's methods of kind of handling that kind of stuff, um, but just try not to get into those situations. It, sometimes it's unavoidable but whatever. Um, and bounce rate is if you're on a website and let's say you click on uh, a button by accident, you get sent to a new uh, page and you hit back immediately. That technically counts as a bounce for, um, for the website. It, it can be referred to as bounce rate, pogo rate. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to kind of define it, but it's basically the act of going to a page realizing it's not what you want and immediately leaving it. Uh, so you wanna try to avoid that as much as you can, you know, make your, uh, make your uh, links to other portions of your website as clear as possible. Make sure people know where they're going on your website and nothing's misleading. Um, category relevancy, this is again, you know, same thing we've kind of been talking about the whole time. You know, you just wanna make sure that uh, uh, Google is able to categorize you into the right industry, into the right profession, whatever. And then social data. This is something that uh, some people kind of associate with like social media, um, that kind of information. Uh, what some people don't realize is links from social media don't actually count towards any SEO improvement. It's mostly just the traffic that comes from those social media outlets. So if you have a link on your Instagram page, you're not getting uh, a reputation boost because of Instagram but you are getting the traffic that comes from there. Uh, years ago, uh, <clears throat> what used to be a common practice was you would make a bunch of Facebook accounts and link towards your website because 
uh, Facebook was considered a reputable website and Google would say, oh, you know, there's a lot of links coming in from this reputable website. Facebook will promote this website a little bit more. Um, that started Sorry, to- Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. It's my Google home, sorry. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, so it, Google started uh, getting a little bit wise to the situation and they kind of stopped the whole um, social data stream. Uh, so what social media sites are considered now is what's called a no follow link. Uh, and it basically means that, you know, you don't get the reputation benefit or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> I immediately started scanning the chat, see if there was somebody who I had to mute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it's just myself. All right. Uh, but yeah, basically when it boils down to it, social data just refers to um, what kind of traffic you're able to get. All right, we got a question here from Pat Sebastian. Is there anything out there that can be utilized for SEO boosting that isn't destroyed by spam scores or already classified as a no-follow link? Um, yeah, Pat, there's plenty of things. Uh, and actually, there's a lot of strategies that involve kind of reaching out to um, other websites or other uh, outlets that can kind of get you a, a boost in reputation. Um, it's kind of the practice of backlinking. Uh, I talked about it a little bit earlier there, but it's basically trying to get other websites that are relevant to your you know, industry or that act as directories or something like that to link to your website. Directories are a really simple way to do it. Uh, it's really great for businesses that uh, you know, operate, operate through services or whatever like that. Um, Directories are really nice because they're usually either free to get into or extremely cheap to get into. Um, <clears throat> we can take a look at like the business directory for PEI. That's an example. Um, but there's also examples like the uh, Greater uh, Charlottetown Chamber of Commerce. Um, that has a directory within it. You have to you know pay the membership fee to be a part of it. But there's that. Um, there's also plenty of other ways that you can do it. Uh, if you're an innovative uh, business or you're, you're doing something that's a little bit different, it doesn't have to be super innovative, especially here on the island where we, uh, we tend to have slower <laughs> news days. If you're just doing something that's kind of interesting, uh, maybe it's worth contacting uh, news outlets like The Guardian or you know, the local CBC branch. Uh, and then you can get uh, articles written about you through their uh, website. And media outlets tend to have extremely high reputations uh, just because they're very reputable sites as far as search engines are concerned. So any link from, a, uh, from an article or anything like that posted on one of these websites can be extremely beneficial. Uh, and it can, really race your, uh, it can really boost your reputation score with uh, Google. So hopefully that answers your question, Pat. If not, it does. Thank you. Perfect. Cool. All right. Moving on. Okay. We've figured out the ranking factors. Now, how do I, you know, implement it into my site? How do I optimize my website? First, I'm going to go into a little bit of terminology breakdown. I'm going to be talking about a little bit of stuff that, uh, if, you know, if you're new to search engine optimization, you might not know it. Uh, I might be going over your head right now, that's not good. So we're, we're gonna quickly touch on things just so you have an idea and just so we're kind of all on the same page. So right now in front of us, we have some words and then we have uh, basically your average uh, search result on Google. Um, let's find what the title is. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's what you see, like it's kind of that main text, right? That's considered your title. Uh, your landing page is whatever this uh, whatever this uh, kind of listing on Google is going to take me to. Uh, this slug, that might be a word a lot of people are unfamiliar with, is basically the custom portion of the link. Um, <clears throat> so the landing page is wherever the link takes you to. Um, and when you purchase a domain, 
like let's say for this example, uh, AutoTrader purchased the domain of autotrader.com. Uh, anything that's kind of an additional page through with their website comes up with a custom URL. Uh, a lot of businesses that have these massive, massive directories like AutoTrader or Kijiji or whatever, they tend to have very generic slugs. But if you're, you know, like a smaller website, you're promoting your services, whatever, you can actually customize this slug to be whatever you want. So maybe you have an about me page on your website. This could say um, <laughs> autotrader.com slash about me. Uh, or it's a contact page, autotrader.com slash contact, or, you, you know, a service. So autotrader.com slash um, uh, car pricing, something along those lines, you kind of get the idea. You can kind of edit that on your own websites. Uh, meta description is kind of all of this. It's basically everything here. Um, your title is considered meta description. Your, uh, your URL is considered meta description, but most importantly, this information here is considered your meta description. Um, now, when you're writing um, this information up, so this is the, you know, this is that brief description that everybody gets when they kind of see your page on Google. When you're writing that up, you wanna keep it to somewhere between 120 to 150 characters. That way it all fits within here. Uh, and then, you know, you can be, uh, brief about your description, but um, kind of all inclusive of what you want to do. Because like, see with this one, it kind of continues on with this, like three dots, the ellipses here. Um, that means there's more information that the user isn't able to read. So if you're able to condense all of your information into, you know, that 120 to 150 characters, uh, you're in an ideal situation. So keywords, when you're looking at a uh, Google listing, uh, the keywords are usually um, bolded. You can't really see it too, too well in the example here. Um, but if you do a Google search on your own, you type in, let's say you type in boots, um, those results that pop up are going to have the word boots uh, emboldened. So you can kind of see where Google was like, hey, I found this website. It says boots. What do you think? That kind of stuff. And widgets, uh, that's something that is a term for like advertising on Google, but I also kind of refer to something else as a widget. So <clears throat> this is from the same search uh, and you can kind of, you, you might be able to recognize this as, you know, it takes a couple of different forms. Uh, if you're looking up a product or something like that, there's usually this little box that's like, uh, this product is something like this, uh, you know, if, um, Let's say you looked up apple pies. It'll probably give you some sort of description on what apple pie is. It might give you the picture to kind of go along with it. And it'll give you a nice description like, uh, apple pies were invented by Tom who was really hungry and wanted some fruit in a compact form. You know, <laughs> something, something along those lines, right? Um, this actually occurs for a lot of different, um, a lot of different, you know, kinds of search. Uh, and it can be a huge benefit to your website if you can kind of covet this like preview spot. It can be really, really beneficial. Um, usually the traffic from this kind of stuff is like enormous in comparison to like even just having like a ranking on Google because this shows up before any of the regular rankings. Uh, this is the first thing you see even before the first rank on Google. So in a lot of situations, having this preview is better than ranking first on Google, which is a weird thing to say. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's kind of step back. Let's say you are starting from scratch, you're building your website today, uh, or over the course of however many days, obviously. What are some things that you need to focus on to optimize your website? First thing, you have to have keywords. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, what you're, you know, putting into your text makes sense and is easily categor categorized. Uh, so you don't want any confusion there. You want to focus on the same kind of keywords or the same uh, line of keywords. You know, like you don't want to be jumping industry to industry. You just want to kind of stick towards, if you're a restaurant, you want to make sure that you're focusing on restaurant terminology and you're focusing on what kind of restaurant you are specifically. 
um, you want accurate and descriptive metadata. Uh, so what does that mean? We'll, uh, we'll jump back here. We want this information to accurately represent what is on our pages. Um, you can do that through a lot of websites like Wix, allows you to access that information pretty easily. Um, WordPress, sometimes you have to add plugins like Yoast SEO to really access this in you know, a super easy manner. Um, but there's, there's ways to do it on most websites, except for like a Google site. So if you have a Google site, I hate to tell you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna rank well on SEO, which is so weird because it's a Google site. Anyways, we won't get into that. It's, it's a weird thing uh, that if you have a Google site, we can talk and I can help you out a little bit there. Um, alt text for images. What does that mean? What in the world is alt text? So it stands for alternative text. Um, and it is what visually impaired individuals use for understanding what photos are on a website. Uh, okay, that's kind of weird. Why is that a thing that I should be concerned about for uh, my website? Well, first of all, uh, accessibility. You want everybody to be able to you know, view your website, uh, irregardless of vision. Uh, and two, uh, computers are really bad at identifying uh, images. It's kind of why you see like, you know, those am I a robot tests always include, you know, some form of visual recognition. Uh, so whether it's, you know, find the cars in these photos or something like that, it's because robots are really bad at it. Um, so what Google does is it relies on the descriptive text for alt text on an image to clearly categorize what the image is. Um, it seems like a pretty small detail and it's one that's often overlooked, um, but it's a pretty important one. Um, there's also like, uh, WordPress will often give the warning of like, if this is just a, um, if this is just something that's, you know, to add decoration to your page, don't add alt text to it. Uh, if you come across that, it's for good reason actually. Um, <clears throat> Some images on your website you don't want categorized. You don't want kind of saved in that bank of knowledge that Google keeps. And that's simply because it doesn't match the categorization of your website. So let's say um, you're using a picture to add emphasis to something that you're saying in uh, an article or something like that. Um, if you, uh, if you, use an image that's kind of adding emphasis on something that doesn't really match the theme of your article, but it makes sense for formatting reasons, um, you wouldn't want that to be categorized because Google, Google might get confused on what you're actually trying to say. Uh, so that's kind of important to kind of keep in mind. Uh, I see Alex typed a message in the chat. I'll, uh, I'll get to you at the end of this slide and we'll go over that. Text formatting. This is basically how your text is laid out. So uh, you don't want to give people a wall of text, a wall of information, because generally it's pretty intimidating and psychologically there's just something about seeing a wall of text that just turns people right off. And I hate, uh, I hate this website with a uh, burning passion, <laughs> but they're a tremendous uh, proponent of like text formatting, Buzzfeed. Any Buzzfeed article is like a master <laughs> class <laughs> text formatting. Uh, they keep uh, the writing uh, really, really welcoming. Uh, and then they separate bits of writing with either some interactive visual, like a, a GIF or uh, just an image or even a short video. Um, take examples from BuzzFeed uh, because they do text formatting in a tremendous way. It's extremely readable and it sucks people in for a reason. Page for services. This is so uh, Google can accurately kind of gauge what you do on your website. Uh, if you have just like a one pager uh, and all of your information that exists for your website is on that one page, it's pretty hard to categorize. So you wanna make sure that each individual page serves a purpose. Uh, if you can have a page for your services, perfect. If you can have a page for individual services, ideal. Because then if somebody's searching for, you know, um, 
if somebody's searching for, uh, you know, caterers, they'll want to get directed straight to a catering page, not necessarily like, uh, you know, a wedding catering page or, you know, whatever. Bad example, but you kind of get the idea. You want to make sure that people can get directed to the right page uh, and find what they're looking for immediately. Uh, you want a contact funnel. You want basically your website to kind of flow into this nice um, uh, trickle down section straight to uh, being able to contact you. If people make it all the way through your website, they're probably interested enough to contact you and you want to be able to uh, kind of take advantage of that. So always have an easy way for people to contact you at the bottom or uh, at a place that you can kind of gauge interest um, of your page. Content strategy. This is like the last thing you should be thinking about. Um, everything before content strategy is your foundation. And as soon as you have your foundation set up, then work on your content strategy. So that is, are you making blogs? Are you making videos? Are you making, um, articles? Are you sharing articles? What is it that you're doing on your website to keep people coming back? because you don't want to rely, rely on people just coming back for your services because to be frank, that's going to be um, a pretty slow build, like a very slow build. Uh, you want something on your website to give people value so they can come uh, even irregardless of taking part in your services. That's going to help your organic traffic and ultimately it's going to help you convert more people um, down the road. All right. For the other, proponents. So let's say you have a website. Uh, you're, you're not starting from scratch. What do you like, how you optimize your site all relies on what do you want out of SEO? Oh, sorry. I, I meant to get back to Alex. Um, how descriptive would you have alt text for your images? Keep it concise. Um, keep it brief, but keep it concise. Um, so like, let's say you have an image of, um, uh, let's say you have a uh, microphone uh, representing podcasts. Uh, you might honestly put in your uh, alt text, microphone icon, uh, uh, image of microphone, podcast icon, something along those lines, just so you can kind of keep it, you know, simple. Or if it's, you know, um, you're trying to uh, show off, your headshots for a photography business. You want to, maybe you don't want to focus on who it is, you know, like a uh, headshot of Alex Trebek. <laughs> you want to say a uh, headshot uh, or example of headshots, something along those lines. Keep it brief and keep it, you know, descriptive. Hopefully that answers your question, Alex. Um, great, cheers, cool. Uh, okay, so what do you want out of SEO? Uh, if you want to boost e-commerce sales, online ordering, this counts for any business that does, you know, online ordering or whatever. You want to keep a simple product directory slash, slash search. If you have hundreds of products on your website, you want to make sure that people can find what they are looking for simply. Um, and that could mean, you know, promoting uh, commonly purchased products. That could mean, uh, you know, having a very simple to use search function, whatever. But you don't want people trying to go through hundreds of products, getting frustrated, trying to find what they want because they will leave. Um, meta descriptions for each product. This is basically, you know, you want uh, people to be able to find what they're looking for. This is to get in front of people's search intent. So if you're selling, uh, if you have an e-commerce website that kind of focuses on a lot of stuff, but you sell like a local, um, you sell like a local lip balm or something like that. Um, you want to make sure that people who are looking for a local lip balm have the availability to find you. So add a product description um, that makes sense, you know, and add that into the meta description. You have to have kind of like, it's, it takes a long time to do, but if you can have a individual meta description for each of your products, you're going to fare off better. Uh, product slug, you just want to make sure that that custom portion of your URL um, uh, matches. So if it is that local lip balm, you don't want it to say, um, 
I'll, I'll use the example of, uh, yeah, no, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with that one, sorry. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to sell that lip balm, you don't want it to say um, uh, amazon.com slash 123887AGTP. You kind of get the idea. You can see that jumble of uh, letters in your mind and it doesn't look good. So if you can have a, a product slug that is descriptive and accurate, absolutely do it. Uh, category relevance targeting. We've we've already talked about this a number of times. Um, just kind of make sure that your content uh, and the text on your pages kind of uh, harken back to what you do. You're an e-commerce website, you're a restaurant, you're whatever. For lead generation, you want to have a multiple page website. That way uh, people can view the services that you offer. People can, you know, uh, find a contact page for you quite simply. If people are looking for, uh, you know, information about a certain person in the community, like uh, if somebody wanted to look up information about myself, or let's say you wanted to look up information about Pat Sebastian, because he's a, a growth coach, and a business developer, <laughs> uh, you want to be able to find that information quickly and having an about me page uh, or about the company page uh, works really nicely for that kind of stuff. You want uh, keyword targeted value-based content. So this kind of goes back to what I've been saying the whole time. You know, you always want to be giving value to your consumers. Uh, and if you can, you know, hearken that back to what you're doing, ideal. Um, phrasation of industry, again, same thing that we talked about a hundred times, uh, and then industry business directories. So this is, you know, like what we talked about with backlinks. If you are a, uh, if you're a service-based industry, uh, you'll want to look at industry, um, specific directories. Like maybe there's a plumbing directory or maybe there's, uh, you know, a growth coach directory or a marketing directory or something along those lines. So people can easily find um, local uh, service providers. And then there's also the business directories like we kind of talked about with the uh, Greater Charlottetown Chamber of Commerce. There's that kind of stuff that you can look into. There's also like yellow pages. There's a ton of things that you can kind of look up into for that. Boosted organic traffic. We want to create valuable, relevant content. We want to cross promote that with social media. So a lot of things are, <clears throat> a lot of things in like the further portions of SEO don't necessarily uh, involve being on the website. So I, that might sound counterintuitive, but it's all about kind of drawing focus to the website through alternative means. So that could be, you know, getting people to link to your website. It could be, um, yeah, we, we don't have a whole lot of time. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. Um, you know, you want to cross promote it in ways that uh, uh, make sense to the business and you can kind of create those external funnels for traffic. Uh, you want to stay active and update often, especially right now during COVID-19. You want to make sure that you're transparent with your um, customers and that people know what's going on. Uh, and then AdWords and Google Ads, that's something that, you know, it's something that works hand in hand with SEO. If you kind of give yourself that boost of traffic, it can be uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> app downloads, uh, if you're a tech industry or you're uh, a website that just decided to, uh, you're a restaurant that decided to put together an app for your uh, online ordering, this is something that's gonna be important. Uh, you wanna have your meta description um, you want to update it frequently because Google takes a look at that or uh, like depending on the platform you're on, like Google Play Store, uh, Opera, Amazon Store, or um, the App Store, they all kind of take a look at how frequently you're updating the description of your app. Uh, <clears throat> you want to do keyword targeting in the description and then title. So if you're, if it's a restaurant ordering app, you want to make sure that you're kind of targeting those themes. Uh, you want it to have a high quality eye-catching icon and uh, for Apple store specific, uh, you can do some keyword targeting. That's pretty good. I'll just fly through this next page. It's tools and other resources. Um, <clears throat> uh, this will be in the information 
in um, in the link that I'm going to put out in chat once again. Um, I'll have information on this kind of stuff, a little bit more details for uh, these kind of things and how they can benefit you. Um, Google Trends is like a really solid tool for uh, creating uh, titles and stuff like that. Um, a lot of these are, you know, analytical tools. So like Google search engine, uh, Google search console that helps you keep track of where you're ranking. Google, my business is an invaluable tool for ranking on anything. It allows you to rank on maps and it allows you to rank on pretty much everything, uh, at a much higher rate. Google analytics is keeping track of how your website is doing. Um, and everything else is just kind of additional tools. But, oh, geez, <laughs> that, is, that is me. So if you have any questions, uh, it's probably best if you, uh, if you wanna reach out to me directly, uh, use that email up on the screen right there. Uh, if you want some more additional information on the stuff that I covered through this workshop, you know, sign up through the, uh, oh, oops. Oh, weird. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Um, there's the link, everybody. Sorry about that. My bad. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, if you, if you want any additional information on the uh, workshop, go ahead and go through that uh, link. Uh, I'll send some information off to everybody who signs up there uh, as soon as I can. Thanks for, thanks for showing up, everybody. I really appreciate it. And thanks for all the great questions. I hope you guys, uh, you know, are able to take something out of this and uh, <laughs> everything like that. Like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at, uh, at the email there. But yeah, that's pretty much me. Uh, Rachel, are you? Yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, thanks, Brody. That was awesome. Um, and if anyone does have any more questions, that Google form that Brody sent out is a great place to send them and get in touch with him that way. Yeah, thanks again, everyone, for coming out. We're doing these marketing webinars every Wednesday. We're hoping to have one next Wednesday. We do have one two Wednesdays from now, so just keep an eye on our social media and on our website for that. But yeah, hope to see you guys soon. Thanks again, Brody. Yeah, thank you.